Hi, this is Film Threat Reviews, and today we are reviewing Spinster with Chelsea Peretti. Hi, welcome to Film Threat Reviews. I'm Alan Ng, manager, uh, managing editor of Film Threat, and I'm with Zoriana Kitt. And uh, today we are reviewing Spinster. Gabby wants desperately to find love. Recently dumped and on the brink of 40, she feels she doesn't matter to anyone. Uh, Gabby's greatest fear is that she'll end up uh, a lonely and pathetic spinster, uh, and that seems to be her destiny. Zoriana, what did you think of spinster? Oh my gosh, you're so harsh on her. Um, no, this is, this is I'm reading their synopsis. This is what this is what they gave us to read about this film. <laughs> That's a little harsh. I know. Although, I do think that this movie will end up being its own little spinster because I'm not sure how many people are going to be into watching it. I, I I love the idea that it starred a female and an untraditionally looking female in the lead, that it was directed by a woman, uh, written by a woman, um, shot in beautiful Nova Scotia with the gorgeous setting. But the film itself, I just didn't think was that great. To me, it wasn't, it didn't feel like a movie. It felt more like a series of scenes that aren't really assembled well cohesively, but just kind of move the plot along. It's sort of like establishing shot conversation with the characters inside the building of that establishing shot. Oh, okay, another establishing shot, and here they are here. Um, and so I, I just didn't feel a connection. Although, on the bright side, the movie did grow on me as I was watching it, and that's because um, of the interaction between her and her niece. That really just all of a sudden added a more human element that just kind of softened things, and, and I wanted to see more of that. That that just took added this sweetness to an otherwise uh, unsweet character, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I had uh, similar feelings about the movie as well. I mean, I, I'm a Chelsea Pretty fan. I love her on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But to me, it's, this is not really... If they try to advertise this as a comedy, it's really not a comedy. It's a drama. And, and to me, the problem with it, as as you mentioned, is um, it flies kind of at a at a nice, steady altitude of 7,000 feet. And, um, and it just stays at that level. And her performance is at that level it's, it's not you know it, energy wise it just never peaked at all and it just stayed and, and the problem is when you fly at that level the entire movie it, the movie becomes bland and that's kind of how i felt about it well there to, was me, the best, to me the best part of the movie was when she uh met uh a, a, a potential guy while hiking <laughs> Uh, to me, that's why. Oh, this is interesting, and and that's when I reengaged back into the story. You know, this and is then about it was over. <laughs> and then yeah. that was the end. Um, well, not that we're giving away anything, but uh, uh, you know, but, but I do like how they resolved it because I was thinking the same thing as well. If okay, well, I don't want to say too much, but if if things had gone the way Hollywood normally goes, then it kind of ruins the whole point of the movie. Yes. And, and, and when you're watching it, you're like, okay, she's a spinster and she claims to want to be single. But of course, we all know she's going to meet someone and then happy, happy ending because it's Hollywood. But, um, but you think it's going in that way and it kind of does. But then there is there's a little bit of a bait and switch, which I appreciated very yeah. much. But like you said, it just it's like it's flying at this con one particular altitude. And I realized it's that there is no there is no big incident or crux mm -hmm. or or a peak that the movie hits where you think everything's going to fall apart or there's some massive something or other that happens that is a turning point for the character it's just this plodding along and eventually she kind of comes to terms with things and becomes a little bit nicer and you know finds what it is that she is you know needing to do but there there's there's nothing at stake mm -hmm. you're not invested uh in 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 her like nothing happens to her upstairs neighbor really nothing happens to uh, yeah. her best friend nothing happens to her brother or her father and these are all the supporting characters that you think okay what is going to happen here that will push this movie over the edge? And there isn't anything there. That yeah. does. You know, I mean, I know people, 
people like uh, Gabby, the character. And um, and it's just like watching a movie of their life. Um, <laughs> you know, I love them. I like them a lot, but I'm still watching a movie about their life. And uh, yeah, and you just need some kind of boost in energy, a boost in plot. Because I, th yeah. I think you're right in the sense that there's that the, the, the story carries Gabby along as opposed to necessarily Gabby driving the story along. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not even the cute dog could help. And that was a great little storyline that just kind of petered out. Like, yeah. just, it just, she got a dog. Great. Okay. But yeah. Mm, but yeah. I mean, well, that's her, that's her accepting where she is and the fact that she can't wait for a man to come into her life to get a dog. So she might yes. as well get one now. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, you know, it, I, what I appreciate about it was, it was not necessarily that she didn't want to be married. It's just, you know, this is the priority of her life is to to fulfill herself through through opening a restaurant. And um, and if a guy should happen to come along, um, then that's great. And I think that that goes to the overall point is that, you know, it's that difference between single older single men and older single women is that we care about it more in a single woman than we do about a man. The, the idea of a spinster versus a confirmed bachelor. Yeah, even confirmed bachelor is a much more positive That's word, positive, yeah. and absolutely. spinster is absolutely negative connotation of that. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, maybe we should change the movie's title to uh, "Confirmed Bachelorette." Maybe that yeah. would be the better title, not spinster. Yeah, and then the other thing is, you know, looking at it, I'm, I immediately thought of uh, Forty Year Old Virgin, because uh, <laughs> there's there's a similar theme in, in that, and and how they dealt with that comedically. You know, they were they were high energy points, but they were still able, Steve Carell's character was still able to uh, to stay true to the, basically the premise of the movie. Well, there were so many high energy points. I mean, even for example, when he, in 40 Year Old Virgin, when he meets, well, Elizabeth Banks has that cameo as like the crazy sex fiend uh, girlfriend, the one night stand. I mean, you know, Gabby has that uh, uh, incident on Valentine's Day and, it was kind of a letdown, you know. Uh, it, it you thought it was maybe gonna something bigger was gonna happen, but again, yeah. it didn't. It didn't. No, no one rises to the occasion in this movie, and you really want them to. They yeah. just aren't. Okay, so I gave Spinster a six. I just felt like, you know, the story was good enough, but it, you know, this certainly could have been could have done things better. Yeah, I didn't even think the story was good enough. So uh, I'm going to give it a 4.5. All right. Well, uh, this is Film Threat Reviews. Uh, visit filmthreat.com for more independent news and reviews. And with that, we'll see you later.